Okay, students, uh, so what I want to do today is I want to talk about a topic called data envelopment analysis. And essentially what we do with data envelopment analysis is we analyze uh, a group of uh, either like chain restaurants or uh, what we call data management units that all use the same inputs uh, to produce the same outputs and we analyze these to see if there is one of our data management units or if we were talking about a restaurant one of our franchisees who is less efficient than the rest of the franchisees. So let's start with a, an example uh, and see if we can get a, a grasp on what uh, data development analysis is. Alright, so let's suppose we have a restaurant, let me change colors here, let's suppose we have a chain of restaurants called Tubby's. And Tubby's produces two goods, um, of course the famous Tubby Burger, and they produce uh, chili, cheese, franks. Personal favorite of mine. And uh, let's say that we have three of these Tubby franchises. Uh, Tubby 1, Tubby 2, and Tubby 3. And let's suppose at Tubby 1, uh, each of these, now to use data development analysis, it's important that you use the same inputs to produce uh, the same types of outputs. So in Tubby 1, we're going to use 10 employees. And those 10 employees are going to reduce, they're going to produce 1,000 Tubby Burgers, EBs and they're going to produce uh, 20 cheese frank, uh, yeah, cheese franks. And let's say at Tubby 2, they use the same 10 employees, uh, and with their 10 employees, they can produce 400 Tubby burgers, and, uh, oh, that first one was 20 cheese franks. They can produce 400 Tubby burgers or 50 cheese franks. And at Tubby 3, with the same 10 employees, uh, they're producing 200 Tubby Burgers and uh, 150 Cheese Franks. So they're really good at producing Cheese Franks at uh, Tubby 3. Okay, so uh, if I were to graph this, this for a minute and we'll go to this new layer. Um, and let's say that I put burgers on the horizontal axis at Burgess. and uh, cheese franks on the vertical axis. And on the burger axis, let's go in units of 200. 200 and on the vertical axis let's go on units of 50. So if I were to graph my tubby burger combinations T1, I said, could produce 1,000 Tubby Burgers and 20 cheese, chili cheese francs. So that would be 1,020, so maybe about here. And this would be T1. T2 can produce 400 burgers and 50 cheese frames. So that's about here. And 
and T3 was um, 200 and 150, so it's going to be T3. Now, if I connected these, if you think back to, say, a principles of microeconomics class, and you recall that we have this thing called a production possibilities curve or production possibilities frontier, we can connect our outmost producers with uh, this line, and this essentially becomes kind of like a production possibilities frontier. And I can see just by looking at this that um, T2 is residing within this production possibilities frontier. So I might look at T2 as a potentially inefficient uh, restaurant. Now, what I can do with data development analysis, though, is if I were to create, well, let's draw a ray through T2 out to this frontier. Now, the question I would ask is, is there some combination of uh, production from T3 and production from T1 such that we could create a virtual tubby restaurant, we'll call it TV, that produces the same ratio of burgers to cheese, fr cheese franks as T2, but that can outproduce T2. So uh, TV is our virtual. producer and it would be a combination of T1 and T3. So is there some combination of T1 and T3 that can produce this quantity uh, TV of burgers and cheese, fry, cheese franks that are going to be out producing uh, T2. So if I were to uh, if I were to analyze the distance of these rays, what I would find out is that um, this, the ratio of T1 and T3 used to produce this virtual producer TV would be uh, 0 0.54 um, T1 plus 0 0.46 T3. So um, let me create a new layer of this one for a minute. Okay, so if um, I look at T1, T3, and then add those two together to get T so this would be 0 0.5421, 0 0.4623. Okay, so let's look at burgers and chili cheese franks. Um, if, if I used uh, T1, only 54% of T1's production, T1 would produce 540 burgers. Uh, and 54% uh, of the cheese franks production would be 10.8. Then 46% uh, of T3 production would get me 92 burgers and 69 cheese franks. And if I add those together to look at this virtual one, I would notice that the virtual tubby restaurant would produce 632 burgers. 79.8 cheese francs. So, I just put a second. So, this virtual production point would be 632, 79.8. And what you'll quickly notice is that our virtual virtual production of 632 uh, and 79.8 is well greater than T2's production of 450. So indeed, there is a combination of T1 and T3 that's more efficient at producing burgers and cheese franks uh, than T2. 
So the question is, how much more efficient is how much more efficient is um, TV than uh, our uh, T2 uh, production? So uh, in order to figure that out, um, what I want to know is what percentage of inputs are required to for TV to produce only T2's production. Uh, production. So uh, in order to get that, now this is a linear system, so I can look at either the burgers or at the cheese franks and I'll get the same answer. What I would do is I would take T2's production, in this case I look at T2's burger production, which is 400, Divide by TV's burger production, which is 632. If I do the math correctly, this is going to be a fraction of roughly 0.63 or 63%. So we would say that T2 is, or T2 has a, an efficiency index of. 0.63, or we would say that T2 is 63% as efficient uh, as our uh, virtual producer. Now, um, I could do I could do the same thing and look at T1 and T3, and what I would find out is that T1 and T3, because they lie on that production frontier, uh, their efficiency index. index is 1, meaning that um, they are efficient, they lie on the frontier, and there's no combination of any of the other producers. Uh, so uh, if I were looking at T1, there's no combination of T2 or T and T3 that could outproduce T1, uh, and the same holds for T3. So uh, that's our introduction to data and development analysis, and uh, in part 2, I'll look at an example and we'll look at how to solve something like this in itself.